Hi, welcome back to Everyday Blessings. Today I'm gonna to show you what math curriculum we use and just kind of flip through it with you. I have to add a little disclaimer here. This video is specifically for homeschool moms, homeschool parents over the age of, let's just say 18. And if you're a child watching this video, stop, go outside, play, get out in nature, read a book. This video is not meant for you. The curriculum that we use for math is called Matthew C. I can't say whether or not I like it or prefer it over any other math curriculum because we haven't used any other math curriculum. This has worked really well for us. Uh, I will start by showing you my kindergartner's math books. So when you order the, I think it's the level up pack, um, they send you the teacher's book and a DVD, which you can buy all of these things a la carte too. You don't have to get the whole package. Um, obviously, this is all still in the wrap. I haven't opened it. Um, I haven't needed to because this is single digit addition and subtraction. I'm pretty confident in teaching this one. So I didn't really need the teacher's book. Um, I don't know why I bought it. It was just buy the whole package and that's what I did. I probably won't do that next time. And then in that package you get the child's workbook. And this is really great because it breaks everything down into lesson numbers. So like there's 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D, and 4E. And then it moves, oh, 4F, and then it'll move on to the next. Never mind, 4G. <laughs> okay, 5A. So there's a ton of practice sheets in these books. We don't do all of them. Um, if my son can show me that he understands the lesson and we do, you know, A, B, and C, and he shows me he's got it, I don't go all the way to E or F because that's just redundant you know show me you've got it we can move on if I need extra reassurance that he's got it they've got these testing books so you now here's the I just saw it, I just saw it. okay the lesson four test obviously he didn't do it. I had no question whether or not he was grasping the material and we really don't use this book a whole lot. Um, I did, I think I did use it for five. Yeah, I did. So I used it for lesson five. Um, but we, in our state, in Illinois, we're really laid back on homeschooling laws. So we don't have to show we don't have to keep a portfolio. We don't have to do any of that stuff. If we needed to, this would be great. If you live in a state where you have to keep a portfolio or proof that your children are progressing, these test books would be great because it's all, you don't have to like pull it out and put it in a different binder. This could be your thing that you hang on to for your math portion of your curriculum for the year and all of the other consumables you don't have to keep you can just get rid of them 
you don't have to worry about three hole punching or anything just hang on to this in whatever portfolio you're using and that should be sufficient enough we really like the Matthew C curriculum um, because it really works for the way that my two boys are learning I have not really I've looked a little bit into Saxon um, was another one. Oh, teaching textbooks. I've looked into that um, because I do have a sixth grader. Right now, we're getting through sixth grade math. No problem with the math you see. Um, I will say that when we started, I did buy their manipulatives. They have, um, I wish I would have brought them. They're in my office. But they have cubes, just manipulative blocks. We don't use them a whole lot. If one of my children are really struggling on a math problem or like they're just not focused that day, we'll bust out the manipulatives. But we don't really use them a whole heck of a lot. Um, so I, I don't know that it was really worth it for us to purchase them. That's not to say that it's not, it won't be worth it for us later on down the road because we do have three children coming along behind them that are going to homeschool too. So we may use them with another one of the kiddos. I'm not sad that I bought them and they do come in handy every once in a while. We just don't use them for every single lesson like I think you're supposed to. But as long as my kids are grasping math and getting the concept down, I don't care if we don't necessarily go buy the book. Now for sixth grade, my sixth grader is going through the fractions portion of Matthew C. And this, I definitely needed the teacher's manual for because fractions. <laughs> Do I need to go into any further explanation about that? I mean, I'm relearning how to find the least common denominator. Like some of these phrases that have been ingrained in my brain from, I was public schooled. So some of these phrases that have been ingrained in my brain from my own childhood are a little, um, what's the word my kids use? Cringy. So when I was reading through and I, uh, we were looking at um, finding equivalent fractions and it got to the part about finding the least common denominator. It was a little cringy for me. <sighs> Brought back some middle school classroom memories. My middle school, I don't know if he was my sixth grade teacher or my seventh grade teacher. I don't remember his name at all, but man, he was dull. So dull. And he really didn't give a crap. Ooh, sorry. He did not care if we obtained any information or not. He would literally, I kid you not, he would teach for like 15 minutes. We had 40 minute periods. He would teach for like 15 minutes and then give us a worksheet and that's what we were supposed to do the rest of class. I don't, I don't have any regrets homeschooling my kids. Not that all teachers are like that. Teachers are great and we're very blessed to have them. I do think that they are very underpaid, but that's a whole different topic for a whole nother time. Thank you to all of the teachers out there because my goodness, I could go on, but Let's just really quick, you're taking a whole group, sometimes like 32 children that are not yours and enriching their lives, whether they want to or not. That's gotta be ridiculously hard. And then you're hardly getting paid. Sorry, side note ramble. Anyway, having the teacher's book for this level was definitely, came in handy um, and I am relearning middle school math so I'm able to figure out what the answers are 
But even if I wasn't and I was just kind of wanting to hurry up and skim through it, um, all of the answers are in the back of the book. And it breaks it down. So if I know that my son's got it and he can do, you know, he shows me he's got lesson A and lesson B down with little to no help, I'll have him do lesson C, I'll check it, and then if he's got it, we just move on. We don't go through all the way to lesson F. I think that's just too redundant. But it is a very thorough curriculum and I like how it builds on every year. So like here's, you know, um, seven, B, he completely understood. 7C, he completely understood. We're done with seven. We're just gonna move on to eight because what's the point? He's got it. So we're just gonna go. We're just gonna keep on moving. That doesn't mean that he might not get stuck somewhere and need to stay on another lesson for a little bit longer, which is totally fine. That's why we homeschool. We can breeze through whatever is easy breezy and we can you know, really focus on whatever needs a little bit more attention. I was saying something before that. It's gone. But I really like, oh, that's what I was saying. I really like how these curriculums really build off of each other year by year. They start out pretty much the same, you know. Um, every, in the beginning, it really focuses a lot on the blocks and things like that. And there's a pattern that you start to see with the Matthew C curriculum, where it starts out uh, really like with the blocks and the manipulatives, and then just starts adding just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So I like that it has the review really in the beginning, not only of the year before, but even a couple years before, so that if you had a little bit of a struggle somewhere else, you're able to touch on that again. And if you didn't have a little bit of a struggle, it's a little bit of a confidence builder. I know at least for me, when I was in public school and it was always like the beginning of the year, my confidence was really high because I was like, oh my God, I'm so smart. Like I'm breezing through these worksheets. And then it started to get harder and my confidence got just a little bit lower, but I like that it's a big confidence builder in the beginning of the year which for us is like July because we homeschool year round. So we don't really have a beginning of the year because we never really stop. We just kind of keep going. But again, another video for another time. We are very happy with the Matthew C curriculum though. <laughs> I hear a little eavesdropper. You pooped? Mm -hmm. Okay. Diaper. In your diaper. Oh, okay. That. I know. Do you see that? All right. Well, I've got a poop to change. Tell me in the comments down below what you have found helpful, like sixth mm. grade, you know, mm. seventh grade and beyond, because um, I'm a little bit scared. I've heard that teaching textbooks is great, but um, I'm scared. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for me today. I gotta go change this. As always, have a blessed day. Bye!